Hey there. You are listening to the House Music Connection podcast. I am your host, Tony Fuel. And in today's episode, we'll be talking with John Manley from the UK. John is a DJ's DJ. He, um, you know, his curation skills are top notch. Uh, DJing is a skill that he's been um, honing in on uh, for the last uh, couple of decades and specifically at the, for the last nine, nine years at uh, Deep Radio Network or D3EP.com. John supports all kinds of electronic music, uh, but you know his true passion is house music. Um, he is an all-around just good human being, and he is a big supporter of all of a lot of artists, both new and established. Um, and uh, you know, throughout this episode, we'll discuss uh, John's story and how house music has helped John navigate life and personal loss. Of course, we'll also go into you know his roots with uh, dance music and how DJ named Sasha really helped cement uh, John's love for 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 house music and dance music. But real quick, before we get into the conversation, I do have I do have a free gift for those of you who are listening. I call it my release roadmap, and you can download that really release roadmap at tonyfuel.com/roadmap. Again, that's tonyfuel.com/roadmap. So, without further ado, let's get into the conversation with John Manley. Hey, John, welcome to the podcast. Um, good, it's really good to have you here. Thanks for uh, being on the show. And um, I think our listeners are really going to be inspired and just feel a more a deep connection to the house music community at large. And if you wouldn't mind just starting out with a brief introduction of yourself uh, for listeners, that would be great. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, first of all, Tony, it's an absolute delight to be uh, asked to come on this podcast. Um, it's very kind of you, and look forward to uh, having our chat for the next uh, few minutes or so. Uh, so, yeah, so I'm John Manley, um, and I'm the host of Houseworks uh, radio show on Deep Radio Network, which was started by Grant Nelson, coming up for just over nine years ago now. Um, I'm also co-owner and A and R of Different Attitudes, a record label which has been going for a number of years. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, and I've been DJing since the uh, mid nineties. Awesome. So how did you, how did you discover house music? Um, I know that it's kind of bigger in the UK than it is in the U S and in the U S people kind of have to discover it. Um, but I, I don't know if it was maybe, maybe it's a little bit easier to, to discover in the UK, but tell, tell, tell us about that. Well, I mean, I suppose really, uh, I was always into electronic music from a young age so back in the late 80s mm. you know you'd start hearing those sounds appear you know in some of the sort of the, the top 40 charts as well mm. eight to eight state and you know, people like or what all that sort of thing uh, and the shaman um mm. and then it was probably in the very very early 90s 91 92 um when i'd heard of a dj called sasha um mm. and Mixtapes of his were being shared around at school. Uh, he'd obviously make copies of those. And it was really the Sasha's G-Spot 1992 and the Universe uh, um, Rave Festival um, mix that he did that really just blew my mind and got me into dance music and house music. Uh, and it just went on from there. Um, so, And then I think it was probably 1993, 94, when I got my first uh, set of turntables when I uh, didn't really know how to DJ. Mm -hmm. um try to learn from friends mm -hmm. um and yeah it's sort of grown from there really um and obviously it was an exciting certainly in the uk it was an exciting time i mean djs were playing all sorts of music there wasn't there were sub genres but they weren't sort of you know you get djs playing one type of music against another right after another type so it was just very much a very inclusive sort of underground scene that was going on and uh, yeah it was fantastic absolutely fantastic. That's really cool because uh, i remember when i was you know growing up uh, around that same time um it was just dance music to me. It wasn't like, I didn't like, I mean, I, I loved like house and trance and, you know, I knew that it was house music, but I, there was a lot of dance music that I just called dance music. And yeah, yeah it just seemed like it was a little bit more open at that time. And things have kind of, I don't know, um, splintered off. And then it almost seems a little bit more tri tribalistic these days. Um, would you, what are you, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, certainly as, as, as genres have developed and broken and split into sort of sub-genres and new sort of styles of, of, of electronic music have uh, come along, there's definitely a sort of a, a split. I mean, I think some of us have been around for a long time, have a lot of love for lots of different genres. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's, 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 I think it's fairly healthy. I think it's a normal thing. I think people find genres and you get certain producers that manage to break out and create their own sort of scene. And I think that's a healthy thing. Um, 
it's good when it happens and it's exciting when you hear people take on maybe something that's, I don't know, for example, uh, garage or whatever, or, or jungle and develop it further into their own sound and create mm-hmm. a little sub, sub scene. I think that's, that's always a healthy thing. It's always sure. a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And then so, uh, so your, your, your radio show is a house music radio show, but you do throw in some yes. other genres um, and whatnot. Uh, so would yeah. you say that you like house music, I guess, the most, or is that kind of like your number one right now? I, I, yeah, I mean, house and garage is my main go-to, particularly sure. on the sort of more soulful and the, and the deep side of things, um, as I mainly sort of play on my show. Um, <clears throat> but I have a huge love uh, for, for jungle uh, and for dub and reggae as well. Uh, and obviously lots of other types of house music and dance music. There's, there's nothing really that I don't like or will mm. engage with. I think is as long as it's good and it's been well produced. Um, I'm fairly open minded when it comes to music. Um, it's not a great deal that I don't like, I don't think. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and I do listen to all sorts of styles of music outside of, you know, I think sometimes it's good for the ears to sort of break away from the four, four. Cause I listen to an awful lot, as you can imagine, preparing mm-hmm. for the, the radio show each week. And that's right. part of the pleasure. I love doing it. I love doing that. Yeah. So you've been in, uh, deep, you mentioned deep, deep.com. So that's uh, d3ep.com for mm. listeners. And uh, you're one of the original DJs on d3ep and yeah. deep.com. And uh, it recently turned nine. So can you uh, tell me a little bit about uh, the evolution and uh, the genesis of deep.com and then how things have changed over the nine years that you've been doing that, that, that on that station? Sure. So, I mean, going back right to the start, um, it was, uh, I remember, I do remember actually, it was during the summer and I think and Grant Nelson, the legendary Grant Nelson, who uh, mm-hmm. is the, the person that set up the creator of, of Deep, um, he posted on Facebook asking for people to submit uh, examples of radio shows or podcasts or mixes that they've done for a brand new radio station that he was in the process of setting up. Um, and that was what, just over nine, that was over nine years ago. And so I just sent a link. I was already do- I was already doing online radio on another station called NewRave.com, which was a, again it was a multi-genre, uh, he- heavily more on the old school and the, and the hardcore and the jungle side of things. But I was mm-hmm. one of a couple that were doing house shows. Uh, and so I just sent him a link to one of those. Didn't think anything more of it. Uh, and then I got an email, surprise email, from Grant um, saying, uh, "How do you fancy a radio show on a Friday night, eight till 10? And I was like, "Wow." Um, and I know that he, if I get, I think I get this right. He, he listened initially, uh, to, I think it's about 5,000 different shows or something. It was in the thousands. It was a lot. And he listened to each and every one. So I feel absolutely privileged to have been mm. given that, that slot. I mean, you know, compared to some of the other people on the, on deep who are established producers uh, and, and DJs as well, much bigger than, than me. Mm. Um, I was really honored and, and taken really that grant trusted me to that particular position i mean as he said actually you know considering we're a global station every, every time slot technically is his peak time somewhere around the world mm-hmm. but um certainly for the uk so the things eight to ten on a friday is is a dream slot and that's why i take it as much as i have a lot of fun with it i do take it very seriously and make sure i do put good quality content out as much as possible and try to engage with the listeners um yeah and so i started that just over nine years ago and um yeah, we just recently celebrated our ninth birthday um, which was great. And, uh, yeah, so I'm sort of, I think Mike Moraine, who's on it from 10 after me, um, I think we're the only ones that have been from the start next door to each other in the same slot since the, mm. uh, since the start, I could be wrong, but I think that's, that's correct. So, mm. and, uh, yeah, which is, again, it's an honor to play before Mike cause he's a bit of a legend himself, but yeah, it's a great station, a great family feel, um, great DJs made a lot of friends such as your good self through that and, uh, the music. So, um, yeah, it's, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. It's great to have some guest DJs on as well. You know, I've been really, been really fortunate to have some some really good people, such as your good self, on there oh. as a guest mix. And uh, sure. um, but uh, yeah, no, it's 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 really good. I really enjoy it. And it's it's two hours every week where I get just to lose myself completely, just listen to the music, engage with friends, uh, my peers, and producers that I you know I love. And uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's just great fun. So has. Um so nine years is quite a long time and you spend a lot of time preparing for that. Uh, it's, it shows because you have a great set every, every week. And, um, I'm wondering if, you know, it's, it's obviously a big an important part of your life has deep.com. And then, I mean, maybe on a larger level, house music and dance music helped you navigate through life at all. I mean, yeah, I mean, deep, deep has been, uh, I'm, I mean, if I never thought that deep would be, 
without sort of getting too deep for want of a better word, but mm-hmm. uh, deep certainly provided me with um, meeting so many different people, being able to go to different events, uh, just whether it's online or in reality or in, in person to person. Um, I mean, particularly, you know, I think some people will know who know me. I've had some difficult times over the last few years, the loss of my wife. Um, and certainly deep in that respect as hell. And she did say before she, she, she died that, uh, whatever you do, don't give up the radio show. Cause she knew how much it meant to me and how much it gave me that, that breathing space each week. And that's sort of just to, to lose myself and literally move away from what the, the day-to-day, the realities of what was going on. Um, so it definitely, and everyone's been so supportive after that. And yeah, it just, it, and house music, it's just it's pure escapism. Uh, and it just helps you reset and helps me navigate. And it's just, yeah, it's great. And I've, yeah, I'm very, it's so on a deeper level. Yeah. Deep's really been amazing. And the, the family and the community around deep is, is, is wonderful. Um, and certainly yes. the music is, uh, yeah, brilliant. Yeah. So I think a lot of, a lot of times, I mean, I don't know, I've gone into like my zones where I kind of put my head down and produce music for a while. And I kind of forget about like the whole like community aspect of things right. and how important that is. And I don't know, I, I, I feel like having a community is, is, is vital. I mean, it's, it's why we really do it. And yeah. What, what can you say about uh, community and having how important community is, especially with, you know, things that are going on today i think so i mean especially you know certainly from a deep perspective we've it's a it's multinational it's people from all around the world that tune in not just to my show but just to the whole station uh and we have obviously a common love of of, of, of house garage and obviously different other genres of electronic music that we play on the station um and um, you know, certainly with the shout box, it's it's uh, sort of quite unique in in a way. Um, but it's it's definitely a sense of community. It's definitely a place where people can sort of share some of the things that are going on, but equally escape and just you know get away from what's going on. Uh, and it's very supportive, a lot of fun as well. But it it definitely provides a bit of a bit of a respite in amongst all the chaos that's going on around the world. I think, um, and I think that's definitely something that's really positive. I think everyone needs that. Um, yeah, I think it's a good thing. Sure. So you've been in the game for a while and uh, you are probably a DJ first more than, I mean, that's probably more of your, I mean, obviously you're a music lover first and then a DJ. And do you, yeah. do you produce at all? <laughs> um, I have dabbled in production for many, many years, uh, but <laughs> never, ever finished a complete track. Yeah. Um, and I should just, I, I, I'm a, Producers such as a good self, uh, I'm in awe of, um, you know, and and certainly other people say Chico Flash, for example, is said to me, just get on a finish a track. That's what you got to do. Just finish track and leave it and then just keep going. Mm-hmm. Um, it's trying to find the time, but I, yeah, I mean, predominantly I'm a, I'm a DJ first and, and that's what I love. I love playing fresh and new music that is often been sent to me by producers I really respect and uh, supporting them and supporting the whole scene and supporting the labels. That's why I really enjoy bringing this music and new music to, li- to, to the listeners' ears. Uh, I take great uh, joy and gr- great sort of pride in doing that and the opportunity as well. I'm, I'm thankful to have that opportunity on Deep. But, yeah, I do produce and I really should get on and finish something uh, and try and put it out. But I do double and I enjoy it. I enjoy trying to create stuff. Um, but it's usually, you know, you get a few bars going uh, and get some ideas and then it's like, uh, okay, now how do I get this into a track? And you think, oh, it's not quite good. And, mm-hmm. yeah, I should just get on and finish things. <laughs> right. Are you using, uh, what, what's your DAW of choice? I, I normally, well, I've got, I use machine as a sort of, to sketch out my pla- uh, ideas, uh, mm-hmm. and use a lot of the native instruments, um, uh, stuff. So complete, um, but also I use logic, uh, pro X as well to do sort of the arrangements and that sort of thing. But, uh, so a combination between those two really, um, yeah, that's what I mainly use. Cool. All right. So you're, um, your full-time job. You have a full time job. You're a full time parent. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, which is another full time job. It's, it's it never really stops, right? <laughs> nope. And yet you still put, right. on a, put on a two hour show every week. Um, how do you balance your day job and family life, and then still prepare for a high, a high quality two hour radio show every week? Uh, and mainly because I don't. I, I love, fortunately, I don't really require a lot of sleep, so I survive on about five six hours of sleep a night. So, um, but generally, it's just because I've had to learn to be good with managing my time and just getting a lot of things done in, in, in a short period of time. So, and I think also having produced um, put out a radio show, you know, every Friday for the last. What, 12, 12, 12 or so years. 
Um, I got used to sort of getting through promos. I set aside time to get through the promos and the music that's set to me. I come up with a rough list of say 50 tracks. I'd like to try and play that week. It's obviously far too many for two hours, but, Mm -hmm. and then I try to work out a rough flow. And then I know I've got a playlist ready to go on a Friday night. So actually prepare all the tracks in record box, chuck the USB stick in the CDJs and and off I go. Um, So yeah, I mean, sometimes I go on the fly, but I do for the two hour show, I probably spend about, that again, plus another half, probably in preparing the radio show each week um, through going through music, um, the promos, the, the tracks, as I say, get sent to me or looking through track source and various other um, online sites, Bandcamp as well, for tracks I buy. Um, and then preparing the, the playlist. Um, but yeah, it's. I think it's just a case of I've got used to doing it, so I have a sort of a bit of a, a process that I go through. Um, and sometimes if I'm really running late, then I'll just wing it and just, uh, get a load of tracks, whack it in the, on the USB stick, uh, run it through record box and, um, and then go with it, which sometimes is a lot of fun. It's a bit more like playing out in a club, which is, I never play my, my sets when I'm playing in a club because you need to be, that's, that's part of the fun. That's what you need to do. Cause you're not quite sure what the crowd's going to be up for. So, sure. um, but yeah, certainly a radio show. I do produce it to some extent. Um, it helps with the flow and it helps. I know that especially if I'm going down a certain route or there's certain tracks, uh, if I'm going to go for more of a, you know, I try to mix it up over the show. So I'm trying to cover different angles, some of the soulful, some of the vocal, some of the deeper stuff, maybe something a bit more banging, some of the garage house type type, type stuff. So maybe a couple of classics in there are good measure. So I try to get a flow to try and work through some of those sort of subgenres of house and garage um, to try and bring something different to, uh, to the, everyone's ears. Do you feel like there's a difference between um, planning a set for a radio show versus a live, a live set? Yes, definitely. Definitely. I think with a radio show, you've it's different. You've got more, more flexibility, I think, to go in different directions. Whereas a DJ set, you, you know, roughly what set time you're going to be. So, you know, if you're on earlier, you know, what sort of way you're going to go with that. If you're later, you know, you can go a bit more banging. So you have a bit more of the classics or maybe some of the bigger tunes in, in play. Um, whereas at least with, with a radio show, you can sort of meander around a bit more and break it up. Um, so it's quite nice in that way that you can sort of, sometimes I break down into segments, especially if I go into different, uh, genres. Mm-hmm. So I do like a dub and reggae little mix or something. So I might do some soulful stuff for half an hour and then maybe do some dub and reggae for 20 minutes or so, and then get to some more of the banging garage, some of that sort of stuff. So it depends what I'm doing really. And that's, again, that's part of the process that I have each week to say, okay, I've not done that for a while. I've got a collection of dub reggae tracks. Okay, let's do that this week. That'd be half an hour. Or might do a label showcase or a producer showcase. So in which case I'll gather that and then do like a a mix or whatever. Um, So it kind of depends really on what I'm doing. Um, But actually going back to your previous question about balancing. So yeah, so it's obviously trying to balance that in amongst uh, the kids and obviously my my work. But um, fortunately, I'm able to manage that at the moment. So it's uh, it's all good. Cool. Cool. Have you uh, had much, have you had many opportunities lately to play live, play out in, for in live sets? Not in the recent. I have had a couple of gigs earlier this year um, up in Oxford, which is great fun. Sounds of the Underground, which is uh, Finest Wares um, night, which was really really fun. Actually, met a lot of the deep crew up there as well, which is a lot of which is great fun. Um, but no, I, I don't really caught live gigs so much anymore it's it, it's the commitment it's the time away um mm-hmm. and it's fine and as you know again alluding back to you know responsibilities back here at home day-to-day responsibilities it's not so easy to sort of get away and find the time so if they come up um yeah great i love doing it it's still fun to play out live in a club there's nothing nothing quite like it but um i don't certainly go actively looking for, for live gigs so much these days um, yeah. but if they come up yeah i'm happy to play it's all good fun yeah for sure yeah. Let's see. So what advice would you have for, um, some, I don't know, for DJs who are, I don't know, up and coming or if they're maybe trying to get back into the game, get back into the swing of things? I think first of all, and it's, it's hopefully it's not a cliche, maybe it is, but you've got to have a love for the music. You've, mm-hmm. You really don't look at what you see on TikTok, YouTube, or, you know, on the social media sites about DJs, you know, and, and all the quick or the fancy, which is really cool. Don't get me wrong. Some of the stuff like James Hype, James Hype does, it's like with some of the technology is incredible. And like James Abiella as well. And all those little short little five minutes, that looks great. 
concentrate, get into the music, really love the music because that producer spent that time making that track the way it is and, and learn about music, learn about how that, that's genre that really excites you, that really gets into del- dive deep, go searching, try and find your own sound as well. Um, I think that's really important. Um, there's so much music out there, so much music mm-hmm. out there. We're saturated with music these days. Um, and there's, there's, there's a lot of good and there's obviously a lot of stuff that's a bit more average, but there is a lot of good music out there. I know some people say that there's not, but I think there is, there's a lot of good music. I always have more tracks each week than I have time for on the radio show that mm-hmm. I find that from, that, um, so yeah, I think it's in, in good health. Okay. The monetary side of things is another matter, but, um, mm-hmm. but certainly for new DJs, I think go searching, get infused, get excited, find that sound that really excites you and go exploring from there and just learn the craft, you know, you know, learn to beat match, learn about phrasing, uh, practice, lots of practice and don't get put off or, or don't be disheartened. If you know, you think, Oh, my mixes don't sound that great. Just practice and just mm-hmm. do it cause you enjoy it. Um, and don't think, don't go searching for doing the next superstar DJ. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of hard work, but just enjoy it first and foremost. I think then the disappointments, that will come along, you know, if you, you may not get gigs or whatever to start with, don't be disheartened, just do it and enjoy it and love it. And spread your, mix, spread your mixes around. It's so easy these days, you know, get, you know, even on just social media, you don't need to be on that all the time, but you know, if uploaded a mix to Mixcloud or Soundcloud, put a track list on there, make sure that the producers are, and the labels are getting their, their, their due respect and post it out there, send it to your friends, say, Hey, what do you think of this? Uh, and, and take the comments on board, you know, um, and don't be disheartened. Um, it is tricky and there's a lot of DJs out there, but, um, yeah, d- don't give up and, uh, yeah, find that sound I think is, is probably the thing and find that music that really, really enthuses you. Um, because that's what keeps you going. I think really. Sure. You mentioned, uh, I don't know, there's so much music out there. So I, I don't know when I'm looking at tracks or there's so many, so many new tracks out there and I, I don't know, it's, it's kind of, um, I like the fact that track source kind of curates these, uh, you know, these, these different weekend weapons and their, their own mm. in our charts and whatnot. Um, but I know at the same time, I kind of feel like, okay, is it lazy to like, you know, <laughs> to shop from weekend weapons and you know, the essentials chart or whatever. So I don't know. I'm kind of like, I have two minds about that, but, uh, mm. so it makes it a lot. Um, I mean, a lot of the tracks that are on weekend weapons are good, but, maybe I'm missing out on like some of the tracks that aren't on weekend weapons. So how do you even find those, you know, or whatever. So uh, what are you, what are your, what's your, I guess your process for going out and finding like really good tracks and like crate digging these days, but still not getting yeah. overwhelmed with all of the music that's out there. Yeah. I mean, t- I mean, I must admit uh, my, obviously apart from, I'm very fortunate. I do get sent, you know, good, good number of promos and, and tracks direct from, from producers and labels, which is, you know, I always fully respect. And, um, it's great to have those. So I really do try to play the ones I really, really like. And actually <laughs> just not saying, it, but also if I do play them on the show, I will then go and buy them when they're actually released as well. Cause I think it's just paying back to the, to the scene at, and out of respect. I've always bought my music. Uh, music's never been cheaper to buy. Um, I don't think there's any excuse for it these days not to buy music. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe I'm being old. I don't know. <laughs> sure. But in terms of, uh, in terms of digging for tracks, I mean, yeah, track source is great. I mean, I use Bandcamp as well, follow a lot of artists and labels on there. That's, that's quite a good way uh, and see what other people are buying, see what the other producers are uh, and see what they're looking at. Um, but on track source, yeah, I think the upfront promos and the weekend weapons is, is, is certainly a good place to start. Again, that's what they've cur- curated. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I, I tend to use, you know, the, my track source function. So I just got a lot of labels saved, a lot of producers and just go through that and see what else and just dig down through those. I mean, you know, it might take a while and I think you can streamline that process. Um, but yeah, you're right. And there's been occasions where I've heard other state p- DJs on the station, for example, play something. Wow. Where, why have I missed that? Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, have I missed that? But then sometimes it's actually, you know, it's kind of quite good that you yeah. missed it. Um, but it's, it is, it is, a, it is, a, I don't think there's a shortcut to it. I think it's more a case of, of sitting down and listening and then you hone your process in how you, you search for new tracks. I think really. Right. Uh, I think what's another thing is I know some people uh, I've seen don't really like sharing uh, track lists of what they play. I'm completely the opposite to that. I think mm-hmm. it's really important. I think of, of giving due credit uh, to all the producers and labels and what, what, for their hard work. Uh, and I, again, I always give a full track list and ch- try to give out the information on the radio show as well. Cause I think it's really important that that, that's, uh, that information is given out to people to go and su- buy and support. Yeah, I've never really I know it irritates that. some. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I've never really understood that um, whole whole thing of like G- DJs not wanting to share a track li- oh, yeah. uh, track list uh, or whatever, just because it's like why, why are you, it's not even 
your own music for the most part. <laughs> it's exactly, it's not even exactly. yours, your own. Like, you know, why wouldn't you no. want to share that? You know, so yeah. Exactly. And the thing is also it's 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 something that is part of the job as a DJ. And the thing is if and if you're good enough at what you do as a DJ, then you shouldn't have any worries about sh- what you're sharing because you should always be on the on the lookout for new tracks and supporting tracks. So, you know, you always got fresh material to work with, certainly from a radio perspective. So yeah, I yeah, I don't have an issue with that at all. Do you feel like with all of the music that's out there that music has become more of a commodity and it's not quite as valuable as it used to be? Yeah, I think that's certainly the case. I mean, it's, it's, and I think that's been a number, the case for a number of years. I think that there's, you know, we've having been a record label owner as well uh, and, you know, the efforts we go to and the upfront costs of putting money at their tracks out and then obviously to try and get returns on that, I think it's very difficult uh to make money on 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 music now you've got to try and look at other avenues i think to try and generate income and revenue Uh, and i think there's just so much there's a lot of music out there a lot of good music as well but there's a lot of music being uh, produced and and released so it's very difficult uh for producers and labels to sort of cut through all that um and i think you know it's in a short it's very short term now and i'm and i'm guilty of that you know uh my radio show and probably because of the amount of music that i want to play each week mm-hmm. um you know it's very easy to, to to sort of move on to the sort of the next sort of series of tracks um yeah it, it's 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 difficult i don't know what the answer is um because in a way it's it's never been more accessible to DJ and never would be more uh, accessible to produce music as well, which is a good thing. It, it, you know, mm-hmm. it should be available to everyone on, on a budget or whatever, you know, because I um, mean, you know, going back to DJ when I first started, you know, 19 in the early nineties, you know, I did start with some belt drives and a cam made to fade rec mixer, mm-hmm. which I think a lot of people did. Um, right. But then to save up really to get techniques, you know, you really had to really want to do that and really save hard. And um yeah. Whereas now well, digital, and the record too DJing. are just so much more expensive. Yeah. Like you had like well, exactly. A, I mean, one record yeah. like had it was just one release, and it had like maybe three or four mixes on it, uh, or like a dub Absolutely. version and instrumental, and then <laughs> yeah. um, there was one track, and it was like you know ten dollars for <laughs> this one well, record, yeah. and then you know now you can ten dollars will get you you know at, on track stores like uh, new tracks for like you can get four new tracks for ten dollars, and they're all different artists, Absolutely. from different releases, and yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, just no, it's so crazy how things have changed. Um, it's more accessible, it but it's also, I feel like sometimes I get decision fatigue with uh, all of the mm. choices that are out there with <laughs> buying music. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It is difficult. So often each week on tracks or something, I'll probably start for Friday's show. I'll have a look tomorrow night. It was today, Wednesday, yeah, Thursday. So I'll have a look tomorrow. And there'll, be, there'll probably be, I don't know, 20, 30, 25 tracks in there, you know, which is enough for a whole show, let alone everything else that I might find. So it's, and that'll be 25 tracks that I really would like to play. Um, so yeah, it is, it is tricky. And like I say, I remember, you know, especially in the UK, we were buying US imports. So you'd be looking at sort of 10 pounds at a 12 inch, you know, so um, that was in the nineties, you know, so mm-hmm. now, and you didn't think anything of it. I mean, you saved up, but you really then had to really think mm-hmm. about, okay, you go into the record shop, you get your listening. Okay. Do I really want that one? And just, you know, so you have to really think hard and really be quite discerning about what you're going to spend your money on. But mm-hmm, um, for sure. you felt always, you always found, you always found a way there because it was just like a vinyl right. addiction, you know. So. Totally, yeah, yeah, that's for sure. I mean, <laughs> I remember spending my paychecks on on, on <laughs> records, basically. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. well, then getting promos too, but yeah, yeah, it's just such a different world. Yeah, Good it's times. very different now. You're right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think? Um, what do you think makes a good track? Like, what is a tra- like when a track stands out to you? What are the characteristics of that track? Oh, that's tricky. Mm-hmm. I do I must admit, I'm a sucker for a piano, uh, mm. so I do, and a bass line. So I do like something really, and a vocal as well. I do like vocals. I'm a big fan of songs. Uh, so it kind of depends the genre, but I do like something that really moves me and is uplifting. That that really needs to be something. I do like sort of deep and moody as well. Um, but yeah. The, a big single on the anthem, the, 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 a vocal hook does really, does really grab me. I must admit. Um, yeah, that's, it's difficult because it depends on the genre of music. So then mm-hmm. I do like a, some real bit of filthy, dirty bass on it as well. Sometimes it just depends on the mood. I mean, it kind of is how I am with the radio show. It ebbs and flows through some of the sort of nice deep stuff, really melodic, uh, and then right. the bangers. So yeah, it's difficult. I can't quantify it because <laughs> my yeah. tastes also depend a little bit on my mood as well. So. Sure. Yeah. It's, I mean, 
is it the house is a feeling and or any music is really a feeling and if the, if the yeah. that record or that track gives you that feeling then then you're you're going to get it <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely definitely definitely okay so we talked about the deep.com we talked about um you know family life and whatnot um what's the few what is the next uh nine years i know for you <laughs> well hopefully in nine years time we'll still be doing uh, deep because uh, i don't plan on finishing uh, doing that radio show anytime soon sure. um so yeah and no, certainly i think um yeah continue with 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 deep that's definitely the, the, the house works every single friday um is my my focal point for the weekend starting as it were mm-hmm. um i think next year uh really would like to try and do uh, another deep event at ade over in amsterdam if we can mm-hmm. uh no plans in place yet and also I'd, I'd like to also myself put on a uh a deep affiliated uh night locally sort of not too far from here from where i live uh hopefully next year as well that'd be really would like to try and make that happen i keep thinking about doing it it's one of those Mm -hmm. things i need to sit down and actually make that happen so yeah i'd really like to try and do that next year have you done events before have you promoted your own or posted your own live events before yeah i mean i used to do a years ago uh when i was uh, a university student in the late 90s down in exeter um uh used to uh, along with a friend phil we used to put on nights down there um yeah that was that was always good fun uh not always very busy but you know it it varies as everyone knows Mm -hmm. hard work a lot of hard work and then Mm -hmm. a friend of mine uh my uh in the sort of the early 2000s uh my sort of dj partner at the time luke um we used to put on uh we used to have a couple of residencies not far in a city not too far from here on a thursday and then a saturday night two different venues um so that's quite good fun as well but again hard work uh, a lot of fun doing that um but I uh, haven't promoted anything for a long time because it's, uh, it's quite time consuming. Mm-hmm. We did do uh, Deep in the Dam at ADE uh, a few years ago. Uh, that was pre-pandemic, obviously, but uh, that, was a, that was good fun. That was good fun. So hopefully we can try and do another one next year. But it's not something I – it's kind of did, quite, like I said, did quite a bit of that in the late 90s and early 2000s mm-hmm. um, and kind of got my fill and then, yeah – real life takes over career takes over children come along yeah. so it's this that's why deep really sort of house works every friday kind of is enough just that right amount for me to sort of feel satisfied and happy with 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 uh, with the djing side of things very cool mm-hmm. so do you have any uh, upcoming projects that you're excited about um that you want people to know about not not in projects personal projects i mean i suppose houseworks i've got some really good guest mix is lined up i've got true to life and dave shawland coming up mm-hmm. uh jackson uh, and processing vessel uh murat who's the uh co-owner and runs um sound vessel records so i've got guest mixes from them coming up uh on that on the show which are really really good so i'm looking forward to bringing those to people's ears um and then looking forward to seeing see what uh, 2024 brings uh for deep and for houseworks um yeah, that's set to continue um, as far as we're aware. And uh, yeah, it's great. Sure. And awesome. What, uh, I guess what's the best place for people to, to reach you and what uh, platform would you suggest that they go to, to, I guess, connect with you? Well, you can either go to uh, deep.com, so that's d3ep.com. Uh, you can find my DJ profile on there, and there's obviously all the other DJs as well. Um, also my SoundCloud page, and I've got a Mixcloud page as well. So if you just look for John Manley on SoundCloud or Mixcloud, you can find my shows, podcasts are there as well. Um, and I've got a Facebook and an Instagram profile as well, so John Manley Deep. Um, but, yeah, any of those options, and if, you know, I think I'm fairly accessible in terms of, uh, but if anyone wants to message me then, or got any questions or, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, I'm more than happy for people to get in touch. That's, that's good. Cool. All right. Was well, there anything else that uh, you want to leave listeners with? Um, only really to say thanks for looking and checking this podcast out. And uh, also to thanks to everyone who does support the show and deep Net, uh, radio network as a whole, um, you know, and a, Big shout, big, uh, big thanks to Grant Nelson for setting it all up. It's such a great platform and it's just going from strength to strength. Uh, and also, yeah, big shout to uh, all my listeners and the shout box, mm-hmm. which is always good fun <laughs> on a Friday night. Um, and to the producers like yourself, Tony, uh, and all the labels oh, uh, nice. for all the, all, the, all the hard work that they do. You know, I certainly appreciate it. Uh, and it's a joy to bring that music to people's ears. Uh, I'm just the sort of the, the conduit, I think, really. But um, yeah, it's, it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a great opportunity and you know? it's a privilege to, to do that as well. 
Uh, yeah, and thanks to everyone for all the support. I, uh, I really do appreciate it. And uh, yeah, it's awesome. all good. All right. Well, thanks for uh, coming on the show. And it's really good to connect with you. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next uh, nine years on, on deep.com. <laughs> Okay, Take that's care. great. Well, thanks very much, Tony. And I definitely need to have you back on the guest mix on the show again soon. Oh, for sure. Will do. <laughs> it's got to happen. Cool. Okay, well, thanks. Thanks, everyone. And um, yeah, thanks again for the opportunity. Thank you for listening to this episode. I wanted to tell you about a free gift that I've created for you. It's a guide tailored to uh, you producers who are trying to do music production around a day job and family responsibilities. I call it my release roadmap. Um, you know, as producers these days, we have a lot of tasks that we have to complete and a lot of hats, hats, hats that we have to wear. Um, and uh, this release roadmap is really a guide that uh, simplifies the workflow of completing and releasing a track from music production to sending, sending demos to labels and then to prom- and then on to promoting the release. Uh, when you implement a system like what I've outlined in uh, this roadmap, all of the tasks become a lot less overwhelming and you have more, more mental energy and time for creating music. You can download this roadmap at tonyfuel.com slash roadmap. Again, that's tonyfuel.com slash roadmap. Thank you for listening and I will see you or hear you in the next episode. Take care. Bye.